So, and to me, the most important one, or the one that I find uh, uh, is very important to incorporate into your life, uh, is anti-oppression. Okay? So can we go back to the slide about anti-oppression? So anti-oppression, anti uh, and I want you, so we're going to do an exercise where up front here, we're going to actually consider anti-oppression in our work and in our lives and, and, how we, and how we actually can think about it and incorporate it into our daily lives and into the, the projects that we're working on, okay? So I want you to all think about your research teams and the project that you're working on, okay? And what anti-oppression is, it, it doesn't mean that you're, against, you're just against oppression, right? So that's clear. We're, we're all against oppression. We don't like, we don't, none of us like oppression. But anti-oppression actually emphasizes a reflection, okay? That you actually reflect on the fact that there, there is a natural inequality between uh, all kinds of groups out there, okay? That, that is... That is just part of the, the way the world is, and we're always striving to work against that inequality, okay? Um, and, and, and that you actually reflect on it and actually think about it, as opposed to just ignoring it, okay? So that you reflect and think about the different power relationships that exist and the privilege that exists out there. So you reflect on it, and you, you think about it, and you try your hardest to... Uh, to, to challenge that oppression, okay? So I want you to think about your projects and your, and your relationships. Um, and can you go back to the, the question? And we're going to, we're gonna do this exercise, okay? And we're gonna ask on some, some of you to actually, to talk about this, okay? To, uh, to, to reflect about your privilege and power in relationships and evaluate your team members, including your supervisors and their power in, in relationships and in their work, okay? Does, does everyone understand that? It's a challenging exercise, isn't it? But it's, uh, has anyone ever done this before or heard of anti-oppression? Is it interesting? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so who wants to go first? Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, you know, I do community-based research. I, you clearly can see I love community-based research, okay? Why I'm a people person, I get to interact with more people um, and really do work that's meaningful to my patients and the, and the community. My, my patients and the community uh, call me Dr. Mona, right? So, uh, and I, you know, they, oh, here comes Dr. Mona. And, and, uh, and you know, I, it just, that means a lot to me. And, and, but it would, be, it would be wrong of me to kind of sit in my academic chair and say, oh, aren't I so good because I'm equal with, I treat myself as equal with the community and, and, and everything is wonderful, right? And, you know, it's great that I do community-based research, but it's important every time that I walk into a room, a community advisory board, uh, a meeting with students, um, a meeting with my staff or my students to actually realize that that even in that relationship I am the one with power right so it, and it's it's important for me to, to know that and to recognize it and to not abuse it do you understand that it's and that's ref, that's what reflection is it's not that I treat my students really nicely right Angela thinks I'm hilarious right uh, and and I have a great relationship with my students but it's important for me to not forget that I, I am in a position of power and I shouldn't, I shouldn't misuse that position of power, okay? Or, and it's the same thing in the community. I have power on several levels. I'm a, I'm a doctor, so I have power as a doctor. There's a power in my patient-doctor relationships, in my, uh, my knowledge as a doctor, right? My, my social positioning in society because I'm a doctor. You see that? So I have power and privilege because of that. I have privilege because my parents were educated and sent me to university and, and drived me uh, to achieve in university. So that's the privilege that I have and the power that I have. And, that I, and, and, it's, not, and it's not wrong, right? And, I, and I, feel, I, feel a, I feel a responsibility by being a first, gener 
first generation, right? My parents were immigrants. I feel like I have a responsibility of having that privilege to achieve the best that I can achieve, right? To go to medical school, achieve the best I can achieve, and do work that leads to social justice for other immigrant populations, right? Uh, as well as uh, uh, as well as recognizing the power that I have and utilizing it uh, the best that I can. D does that make sense? So, and it's easy to just not even think about all that stuff. But it, what becomes the challenge is actually thinking about that and how you and how you act day to day in terms of having that privilege and power. Okay, who wants to go next? Anybody? I think just very quickly. Do you want to go next? Um, yeah, but then just very quickly. I'm not gonna speak too much about this, but <coughs> I think um, power. objects that we perceive as giving us status um, and power. So, for example, you know, when I go in to do an interview, um, I am very mindful of the fact that I'm going in, I have a laptop, you know, I have got a bag, I've got access to transportation, um, I'm able-bodied, um, I can access certain spaces because I'm allowed to access those spaces. Um, because for me, it's very, very important to create an environment within the interview space where there is a sense of belonging, um, where the participant feels that um, they're not competing, they're not fighting, um, or they're not being challenged. And sometimes it's very difficult because I have to be mindful of how I present myself. You know, if I want to sort of connect with my uh, with, with these participants. Then um, I also have to question the way that I'm presenting myself. As I'm presenting myself here, I might not present myself in the same way when I'm when I'm doing this these interviews. Um, so even those kinds of things we have to be mindful of because again, those things give us status, and those like those statuses give us power and authority over people. Um, so yeah, that was just that's a great example yeah. of practicing anti-oppression within the study. Right? So we actually, they do the interviews in the houses often. And so Shazia comes with a, you know, with a computer. That we give the participants money, okay, like after finishing. So just the mere fact that we have the money and we're giving them money is an issue with, with a power. Do you see that? And But everything that Shazia does, she tries to make the participant feel comfortable, right, by what she wears, how she talks to give the participant a sense of belonging. Are you comfortable? Do you have support? And, and so that's practicing anti-oppression as a PRA. Do you see that? OK. Jamie, do you want to go? or? Yeah, sure. sure. OK. Um, so I, I think that in my role as a coordinator on Chi Wolves, um, I'm very um, aware of my, my power and privilege in, in the role that, that, I, that I am taking on in this project. Coordinator. So a lot of times, like PRAs, for example, will, will refer to me as like their supervisor or their manager or boss, and like I don't see myself at all in that regard. But I have to be mindful that that is how I am perceived, and and then the power that comes with my position as the coordinator on the project. I'm also very mindful of the privileges that I've afforded through education, and um, you know, having completed a master's and and having a family that's kind of like Mona, like I'm the first generation, but you know, and recognizing the responsibility of that. But at the same time, I also uh, see the, the flip side of it and you know, and, and the ways that I face oppression and day-to-day and, and -day work activities as well. And just being a young woman, for example, like ageism and how people perceive you as a young woman and, and the way that you, they perceive that you're gonna think um, as a woman of color as well. And, and the different challenges that that kind of kind of brings. So it's it's interesting because um, I often feel like you know you're kind of like when you when you're talking about oppression, I find it very difficult to talk about. I find that it makes me feel very vulnerable to, to share um, because it's hard to sometimes articulate like how you feel or or certain situations that happen. For example, microaggressions in the workplace. Does anyone know what microaggressions are? No, no, no. 
Um, so microaggressions are kind of difficult to kind of define, I would say. But it's, it's kind of those interactions um, or those actions against you where someone makes a comment and you just feel in your core that like it, w it was out of a place of oppression, let's say. But it's hard to battle those microaggressions because you can't necessarily prove that they came from a bad place or a place of racism, for example, or a place of oppression. So I think we had this discussion with our students uh, last week, and the example that my colleague Muna gave was um, if someone came up to me who identifies maybe as a white male, and he was like, oh, congratulations on the presentation, Jamie. You, you were very articulate. And to, to most people, that might seem like a compliment. You know, he's, he's giving me praise for the presentation. But in my mind, I could take that as a microaggression. You know, like as someone who's completed a master's, and I feel, you know, have a, 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 you know, a, a fairly significant education, like it, it almost seems like there's an assumption being made that I'm not an articulate person, or that I'm not able to like present well, for example. And so what does that mean? Does it mean because I'm a young woman of color that maybe he has that perception? So like thinking about all those sorts of things and those feelings that you get from little comments or actions that are kind of made against you and how to fight those microaggressions and those forms of oppression and they're re it's really challenging because again it's the way you feel right it's not necessarily something that you can, can prove is a form of oppression so uh, hopefully it wasn't like too all over the place and you were able to kind of follow me in my my thoughts but um yeah that's kind of but how maybe I'm, he really just meant like, and maybe he really did just mean it right and maybe it's the way i'm perceiving it but right at the same time like i could perceive it as a as my Right. right. So, yeah. So, uh, that is a little bit of a primer on community based research. Uh, and so, the two things I wanted you uh, to take home as learning points are what is community based research, okay? And what is anti oppression? Uh, what is anti oppression framework and principles? And how you can apply it to your work. So, we didn't get to you doing the exercise, but maybe you can uh, uh, go home tonight, have a cup of tea, and and, uh, and think about it and apply it to your daily, daily life and work. Okay, so uh, thank you very much and we'll see you in two weeks at the Women's Exchange uh, to go over our, our top two questions, okay? Thanks so much everybody. Thank you.